Greetings YouTube. The author Mark Simmons here, back for my 17th instalment of my readings from the Sionic Powers Trilogy. In this episode I'll be reading the first snippet from my third novel, Raised from Darkness. Um, in the story so far, our protagonist has survived a number of nights of violence and rioting and such, um, but now finds himself in a whole new situation, basically. Um, Race from Darkness is available via Poboy Publishing on Amazon. Um, as always, I've not rehearsed this, so you'll have all the sit have to all sit through the um, you know like the ums and the ahs and the and the and the and the meanness. Um, in this ex so yeah, in this extract, I'll be reading from chapter one, which is called "The New Regime." Consciousness was a subjective matter, or at that's or at least that's what Whitfield that was Whitfield Creed's perception of it. There was no doubt that he was awake. The physical pain he had been inflicted that had been inflicted upon him was all the proof he needed. Some of the things he had seen could be taken for the stuff of dreams, but he was living and breathing, albeit within a waking nightmare. The death and destruction that had, that had unfolded around him would haunt his thoughts for an eternity. An eternity was what he had. Infected with some kind of bloodborne virus, Whitfield would have been thrown into this strange world of immortal beings, a concept that, was still, that he was still struggling to come to terms with. He didn't believe in eternal life, but he could not deny that what he had seen or the things he had seen had done. Say that again. He, got, he didn't believe in eternal life, but he could not deny what he had seen and the things he had done. Within this nightmarish state, he had performed tasks that defied belief, things that had made him question the levels of consciousness that the human body was capable of and the boundaries of the physical world. His ideals regarding the laws of reality had been thrown into upheaval. Science had always been his failsafe. When he needed reassurance in his life, some, like his mother, chose religion. But he struggled to accept such hearsay. And yet now, he found himself questioning all that he thought proven to be fact. By his own account, he had moved objects with his mind. At first, he had just taken it as luck that these projectiles had, hadn't hit him. He had assumed that maybe he had misjudged his angles and that the said objects had just missed him. But as his good fortune became beyond questionable and, the, and objects moved around him in, in unnatural manners, he wondered just what was happening. With, with this spate of fortuitousness, he had, he had, come, to, had come a feeling. No, not a feeling more a sensation, a sensation that had formed inside of him. Whitfield could only describe it as a warmth, a warmth that had run up his spine and just so happened to coincide with each of these strange moments. After he became aware of the changes in his body, body temperature, and the way that certain objects defied what he, un what he understood about the laws of physics, he came to the conclusion that these separate events must have been connected, and that it must have been him moving them. I say we end him, a voice stated aggressively, which cut through his thoughts. All of Whitfield's considerations on his state of consciousness and the very physics of nature would have to wait. Right now, he was stood alone in front of a group of people that wished him ill. And then dump his body with the rest of them in here. The same voice continued. Whitfield's eyes were drawn up towards the person planning his demise. With his clean-shaven chin and close-cut hair, Michael scowled down it, down from above. He was stood on a stage, two raised revolvers pointed at Whitfield. His grey t-shirt and blue denim jeans cut an ordinary look in comparison to the black of his weapons, but there was, no an but there was, but there was anticipation glowing in his eyes. The man was more than happy to shoot him. Whitfield could tell this by his body language. He had been around his fair share of unhinged people and he knew the look he was getting wasn't a friendly one. But then Michael had shown him nothing but disdain, so it was nothing new. 
The wooden stage that Michael stood upon was peppered with holes and various pieces of material protruding from the wood. Each hole and object had been caused by the shrapnel of a controlled explosion. Parts of the seating stuck out of the stage's wooden apron, and Whitfield was pretty sure that there was a femur bone jutting out at the far right of the stage. Whitfield had felt the full force of said blast, but had hardly received a scratch. Yes, the explosion had thrown him off his feet, but he was sure that this was this had been another moment that his mind had saved him, stopping the debris from ripping into him. Otherwise, he would have looked like the front of the stage. The explosion had happened only a few nights previous, but it felt like much longer to Whitfield. All around him, the remnants of a throne room lay in ruin. The former ruler and all of her court, now nowhere to be seen. A new group had taken the throne room. To the uninformed, it looked like this had been achieved by force, but that was not the case. By their word, the old building had been like this when they found it. However, this was the same word of the group that stood so threatening, threateningly before him. There you go. Um, book one. How did that happen? Why did it just get so dark? Um, book one out of the way. Yep, like I said, Raised from Darkness. Book three, not book one, what am I talking about? Book three, Raised from Darkness, is um, available via Poboy Publishing. Links will be in the body of the, 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 the video, along with my Facebook page, my Facebook author page, my Instagram page, my Twitter page. Um, let me know what you thought. Um, yeah, so book three is now, we're now on book three. So, so that's, that's a lot of, so a lot of these. And if you're still here, thanks. So um, I'll see you next week.